So hello everybody. <laughs> First of all, uh, thank you to be here. My mission is to introduce our group to you. So there is uh, Christian, Edma, Leticia, Julia, Thibault, and I, Michael. We represent our class for this talk. So we are two CLO students. We are studying at the University of Lorraine at Nancy in northeast of France. And we have the will to become notary. We need to study seven years to access to this profession, which is really important in France. So what's a notary? Um, the notary is a public administrator official. He's uh, in charge of drafting or receiving deed or, con or contract to give authenticity. His main skills are family, real estate, and commercial law. Over the last few years, the world is facing up to an aging population. Our different legal system has had to adapt to this sociological evolution. You can find in France some of the solutions that exist in Scotland, and others are not exactly the same. We talked about our French legal system, but before, let's review the Scottish situation with Laetitia. Thank you. We will study the power of Apple, which is one of your most used measures, but that you already know. This instrument has been improved and enriched by the Adult with Incapacity Act in 2000. This act defines when you can say that a person may not have mental capacity. It's when she's unable to act or make decisions or to communicate, understand, and remember decisions. The main progress of this act is to allow people to claim their future. Now, let's concentrate on the power of attorney, which is a legal document that can be established by a solicitor or written by the concerned person herself. It confirms some power to somebody, generally a member of the family, to take specific decisions about your life or if you lose the ability to make decisions for yourself. There are three different kinds of power of attorney. General power of attorney, continuing power of attorney, and welfare power of attorney. In France, we have different instruments to protect vulnerable persons, which have been improved and enriched by a two roles. A first one in 2007, which has created the mandat de protection future. And a second one in 2015, which has created the administration familiale. This will be explained to you after. Actually, people don't really know this kind of solutions. They only know judicial measures. That's why a notary has some skills. And one of them is the protection of the interest and property of those lacking legal capacity. We are happy to present you this subject today. So what happens when people are too old to look after their own property or themselves? Or what happens when people are mentally ill and so cannot look after it? We'll try to answer to that questions now. First, we will examine the voluntary measure that you can set up when you still have all your capabilities. And then we'll consider the judicial measure which can be implemented if you don't have anticipated something or if what you have provided for is not enough. So, now we will study the measure that protect your estate. This is a preliminary measure of the vulnerable person protection. <coughs> yes, yeah, so we are going to speak about some tools, little use, but very good to know. Then let me begin with the matrimonial system, especially for the possible incapacity of one of the spouses. In France, there is a principle, the principle of freedom of marital agreements. Then, <coughs> despite some compulsory rules, Spouses are free. In our civil code, binding rules have been created in order to protect couples. And these rules of civil order are applied in every matrimonial system. We can find in these rules a <coughs> procedure of representation between the spouses. So when one of them can express his will, his partner has a passive mandate of representation and administration. But it concerns only everyday acts. So concerning the most serious acts, such as the sale of property, 
the spouse has to ask for <coughs> permission to the judge. This system seems to be very appropriate to the everyday life because it's helped to avoid the recourse to the judge. But, uh, not, sorry, moreover, who can be better to know uh, desires and needs of a person than his own spouse? But we should not spend more time on this subject because, uh, in most cases, spouses are approximately the same age, so they risk to know the same issue at the same time. Um, however, I can say it's common today to find couples with a significant age difference, but that's not the majority. Now I'm going to. Thank you, Julia. But I think she's backing up. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Let me talk about the trust. Okay. So the trust is called in French la fiducie gestion, and it allows a person of age and capacity to set up a protective organization if she becomes unable to manage her assets by herself. So we are not going to explain what it is because we have imported it from the legal system. So I think you know what it is and how it works. However, we can say that trust isn't used very much in France and for two reasons. First, it's because it was introduced recently in the French law in 2007. And also because at first it was possible only for a uh, legal person. Uh, natural person, uh, natural person may use this mechanism so this is 2008. And the second reason is that uh, it concerns only patrimonial aspects. However, uh, we can say that the trust is an interesting mechanism to anticipate an incapacity, so we can think that the trust will be more, more used in the future in France. Now, we will take a look to a specific and useful instrument called in French le mandat de protection tutelle. French contract law created in 2007 an instrument to anticipate a future incapacity. It has no connection with wedding or family, and single people can also have this benefit. This tool is very interesting and very useful, especially for the other life. This is very similar to a power of attorney, but there are few differences, and French law talks about le mandat de protection future. It concerns a mandate conclusion with a proxy and concluded in order to protect, to anticipate and protect in case of an eventual incapacity. Um, it could be translated by um, mandate of future protection, but to avoid ambiguity, we will continue to call this instrument the model of protection future. We can't talk about the power of attorney because that's not really the same thing. Yes, in fact, the model of the protection future allows to anyone to indicate one or several persons to represent him. So here, the aim, the idea, is to anticipate the day you won't be able to manage your assets. So this mandate can be concluded for oneself, but also for others. So for example, parents who have a disabled child can appoint one or several person to, to ensure the protection of the child after their death. And uh, this mandate can be concluded by a private agreement, as well as by authentic instrument. Uh, however, if the mandate is concluded for someone else, it must be a mutual deed. Uh, about the proxy, uh, the advantage is that the proxy can be any, uh, any natural person, for example, uh, a member of the family, a friend, or even a professional, but it can also be a legal entity. But uh, in this case, it's only possible for some corporation who are specialized in the protection of uh, the noble rights. So here, the, the philosophy is really to, to anticipate by uh, choosing in advance a, a reliable person rather than someone chosen by the judge afterwards. So here, for, for all the time, the, the principal is, uh, is capable, is able to manage his assets. He, uh, he remains totally free, so he doesn't lose any power or rights by the mandate. And then on the other side, the proxy can also renounce as long as the mandate isn't yet executed. Yes, so the mandate comes into effect only if the principal can't manage his properties or interest anymore. So the most important is not the date of signing here. Then the procedure requires the insurance of a medical certificate by an authorized doctor uh, in order to give the evidence that the person is now lacking capacity. Proxy's powers are determined by the principals in the mandate 
and so far I use Mozapora to manage its properties. But uh, you have to know that the French notary is important here because if the deed is drafted by a notary, proxy's power can be more extensive. In case of fault or improper performance, the proxy can be declared responsible. It can also have to compensate if the, the principal suffered a prejudice. Finally, once carried out, the mandate can come to an end if the settler recovers his mental or physical faculties, or in case of a revocation by the judge, if the judge considers that the protection is not sufficient anymore. Le mandat de protection future is the best noun, but that's not the only one. So let us present you a very useful violation of the system. Yes. In fact, there is uh, one other possibility to appoint a proxy, but it concerns uh, more specific aspects. Uh, in France, we are talking about le mandat de fin de vie. So it's like an um, end of life care. So this regime is very similar to one of the powers of attorney's aspects. So here I'm talking about the welfare power of attorney. So in France, uh, it has been created in 2005, and uh, it concerns very sick people who can uh, anticipate if one day they couldn't express their will anymore because of their disease. So here, the, the, the mandat de fin de vie must be signed and dated by the sick person herself, and then, then it must be uh, entrusted to family member or to the, to the regular doctor. So this title lasts for three years, but it can be renewed. So in France, when you still have all your capabilities, you can decide what you want when this will no longer be the case. This is what we have seen. However, when you don't have anticipated something, the law provides some judicial measures which must be pronounced by a judge. He has to respect three principles before deciding on a judicial measure. At first, there is the principle of necessity, a judicial measure can only be opened if it's necessary to protect the concerned person. This fact must be established by an evidence. For example, intemperance or illness can't motivate a curatel. The judge's decision is guided by the need for protection. There is also the principle of subsidiarity. So the judge has to check the protection can be ensured by another legal protection less restrictive. In fact, a judicial measure can only be used if there are no other alternative to protect the person. That is the principle of proportionality. It means that the judge must choose the legal protection in proportion to the person's vulnerability and needs. This is the most difficult criteria because to apply because it's the most subjective. This three principle helps the judge to know which measure the vulnerable person needs. Yeah, now we'll see that there are several creative measures which are called in, from, in French uh, la curatelle and la tutelle. But uh, let's begin with the recent measures called l'habilitation de famille. Habitation de famille allows the relatives of an incapable person to represent this person in all the acts of its life, or only some of them. It's important to point out that we speak of a representation of relatives. The person is thus represented by an ascendant, a descendant, a brother, a sister, or even a spouse or a partner. The habilitation de famille measure is taken in order to protect any person that can no longer fulfill its own interests. This incapacity is caused by a deterioration of mental faculties or um, bodily faculties medically confirmed. Yes, and a request must be expressed before the judge and the person making the request must bring several documents such as a detailed medical certificate. The authorized person doesn't have a retribution for its mission. The measure will finish by the death of the protected person or by placing the protected person under a more severe measure. Of course, it can also finish by the end of the period fixed in the contract. Habitation de famille isn't a juridictory protection, 
even if it requires the intervention of the judge. Now I will introduce to you la, la curatelle. Edmar, I don't understand that strange word curatelle. Could you explain to me what uh, does it mean in French world? Of course, curatelle is a judicial measure designed to protect a person who is not capable of acting himself. He needs to be advised or supervised in certain acts of civil life. Curatel is only pronounced if the safeguard measure is insufficient. The guardianship judge shall designate one or more curators. There are several degrees of, cur of curatel, the simple, the reinforced, and the improved curatel. Okay, but how does the judge decide which measure is appropriated to the person? It's a good question, Christian. Judge decides between the three measures according to the capacity of the protected person. Okay, and if I'm the protected person, what can I do exactly? A person protected by a, cura a curatel alone takes decisions about his person if his state's permit. He, ch he chooses his place of residence and has the right to freely maintain personal relationships. It retains the right to vote. It may request or renew an identity document. And the person under curatel may carry out the acts of administration alone and can perform certain strictly personal acts, such as the recognition of a child. So you say that I, I have the right to freely maintain um, personal relationships. But am I totally free and can I really do what I want? In fact, you must obtain the authorization of the curator or fail invite the authorization of the judge to marry, for example. In the same way, the person must be assisted by its curator to conclude a civil partnership. So, in fact, I can't do anything interesting without my curator. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, at least, can I dispose freely of my estate? The person under curatel must be assisted by its curator to perform the acts of disposition, like selling an apartment. The person can also write a will alone, and he can make donations too, but with the assistance of its curator. And you have forgotten one thing. All decisions concerning the principal residence of the protected person must be authorized by the judge. Yes, it's true. And the person without whom I can't do anything, I'm talking about the curator, uh, what does he do exactly? In fact, the curator must take the necessary protective measures if the person under cur curatel is in danger. He shall immediately inform the judge of these measures. In some cases, the power of curator can be reinforced. The curator collects the income of the protected person, uh, settles his expenses with third parties, and pays back to him what remains. Okay, now let's talk about an even more restrictive uh, protection regime, call it uh, la tutelle. Uh, the protected person is represented in the acts of civil life because of a mental illness or impossibility to express its will. And uh, Christian, when should we open a tutelle? Tutel? If a person isn't uh, able to express its will because of alteration of intellectual or bodily faculties, a tutel must be opened. The situation of the concerned person must be certified by a doctor. But you have to be very careful. Tutel is a regime that can only be opened if there is no other technique of representation that is adapted. And uh, can you explain us what is the mission of the guardian? The mission of the guardian is the representation or, of the person and the management of its property. Uh, depending on the situation, the guardian assists or represents the protected person. The most important acts, such as the sale or Porsche case of real estate, must be authorized by a judge mm -hmm. or the family concern. Yes, and you have forgotten something, I think. In practice, when the notary is in charge of selling the real estate of the protected person, he must obtain the authorization of the guardianship judge. The opinion of the guardianship judge is subject to the prior realization of the expertise of two real estate professionals. And now, Christian, can you explain us what are the conditions to be a guardian? 
In the first time, the judge will select a guardian according to the will of the protected person. If the person didn't express its will, uh, the judge will select uh, a guardian in consideration of the will of the spouse or the family. If it's necessary, the judge may appoint several guardians. Frequently, a family council is instituted by the judge in order to take decisions. The judge fixes how long la tutelle is, but it can exceed five years. During these five years, the judge has two possibilities. He can decide on the one hand the end of the tutorship, or he can decide a less restrictive measure if the mental faculties of the protected person have improved. If the impairment of the mental faculties will not improve, the judge may fix a longer time for protection. There is three hands possible. There is the expiry of the period fixed by the judge, a judgment, or when the protected person dies. After those possibilities, let's finish with what we name in French la sauvegarde de justice. Exactly, la sauvegarde de justice, or how would you say that in English, Edna? The safeguard of justice, but in fact, in fact, I think there is no equivalent in comparative law. In French law, it's a temporary measure which is adopted when the person needs a protection, but his situation is not serious enough to open a, a curatel or a tutel. The safeguard mechanism permits to protect the real estate of an old or sick person. The demand is spontaneous, and the plaintiff can be anyone who can prove an interest. The per concerned person will be under the judge's protection. He will check the most important acts in order to con cancel all the negative effects of a contract, especially the negative effects on the real estate of the protected person. So we have seen the main measures used in France. We hope you enjoyed this moment with us. On behalf of our entire class group, we thank you for coming and for your attention. And we thank Andrew Stewart for his hospitality. Now, if you want, you can ask questions about our presentation. Okay. <laughs>